in about 13, 14 minutes from right now, the sun should be coming up over the berm. And it looks like it might be nice. Uh, once again, if it's uh, what you might call spectacular, maybe I'll try and include it at the end of this episode. I haven't actually done that for a while. I think I talk about it, but then I don't do it. Yeah, it looks, it looks really nice right now. Anyway, yesterday we turned the page. We are now on step 75. Uh, yeah. And uh, as I mentioned in the rollback that you're going to be seeing shortly, it looks like we're going to be dealing with photo etch, but I don't think it's going to be impossible. Uh, it looks like it's going to be stuff that I can handle. Nothing looks particularly small. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it's all small. And I guess we'll be using uh, Andy's handy dandy photo etch bender here. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's just roll back and uh, you'll see how it is that we got to step 75. I used this drill bit to enlarge the hole so that we could get this uh, UP gun in. Um, now I have not read the comments from uh, the last video and it was it's just posted actually and uh, I can quite well imagine that there's something that I noticed that I'm sure that other people noticed as well and that is if we move over to the other side here this UP gun um, I didn't notice it when I was putting it on but I can see it now I happened well, Murphy's Law, I guess you might say. Maybe I shouldn't be poking it with this sharp bit. Although I'm not going to be using this. There's nothing in this one. This this was the extra one, if you remember. Uh, and, uh, you know, Murphy's Law. Well, I, I grabbed that one. I have to be so careful not to be breaking stuff off with my hands here. Okay. So we're going to replace this one. There's There's, there's nothing in there. <laughs> As I've mentioned before, I'm so afraid of crushing something and I'm holding onto it so lightly that I end up dropping it. Uh, I haven't I haven't tried this one, so Okay, I'm holding on to it a little tighter this time. There we go. Now I did catch this this uh, floodlight with my with my finger, but I didn't break it off. I'm having a real problem with that lately, folks. But I do believe we're going to be turning the page on the manual today, or maybe I should say tomorrow because it's still yesterday. Um, all right, so we got that fixed. Now there are six more guns that I'm going to put on the other side. They're, they are mirror image to the ones that I've put on this side, so I won't be videoing it. But we'll take a look at the overall ship afterwards. Our hood is turned around. The bow is to your right. And uh, all six are on there. Now, they're kind of hard to see because they kind of blend in with all the other stuff that's there. Uh, they suddenly look very, very small compared to the actual hull of the ship. But here's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. Now for step 74, all it wanted us to do was drop guns down, and we did. So we're done with 74. Okay, 75. 
It looks like 75 is going to be uh, my favorite thing. Photo etch. Uh, yeah, a bunch of little railings that are already cut to length, which is nice. At least that, at least that will be easier than the Bismarck. Um, we'll get through it, folks. We'll get through it. So, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we'll start, we'll get our ladders here. Photo etch D6s, make two of them, and uh, we'll get through this. See you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And here we are with our D sheet. Actually, there's two of them. And as I like to say, it's a good thing because there's only one number six. On, on each sheet and we have to make two. Um, okay, let's cut this off. Um, seems to me I haven't used the macro lens for a couple of days. Kind of miss it. Okay, here's the thing. We are not going to be putting these photo edge pieces on for a while. And while there is a huge risk that I might get absent-minded and reach through and accidentally break something off. It, it appears to me that I've already bent one of our little antennas here. Uh, I think it's a good idea if we uh, take our hood off of the table. I mean, uh, yeah, it looks nice and as a background or a backdrop, you might say, for the, the videoing I'm doing. But uh, I, I, th I think that the, the thing that we should do, it, it, this, this uh, ship at this, at this moment is just loaded with stuff. Just, just absolutely loaded with stuff. Oh, uh, while I'm thinking of it, <clears throat> at least a couple of you have indicated that, yes, these parts should be glued down, uh, but not until the end of the build. And somebody suggested using white glue, so I, I think that's a good idea. Um, but that, that won't be for <laughs> quite a while at the rate we're going. So I'm going to slide this off. Now, now just bear with me while I go around to the other side of the table here. Okay. Now, now here's the thing. You should be able to see me because I'm... Uh, using my fisheye lens. All right, here, here's the thing. Uh, I want you to notice something, and I'll be, I'll be uh, elaborating on what I want you to notice later. I want you to notice that as I pull the ship through so that you get to see uh, all the guns on it and everything and the, the change, uh, I want you to notice that as I'm pulling it through, uh, I'm going to, you're going to see it kind of, it will appear to be sort of jerking through. And, and the reason for that is you are watching this in 30 frames per second. And I want to talk about uh, later on in this video how I want to uh, up to 60 frames a second. But what I'm going to have to do in order to do that. Anyway, here, here we go. Just let me grab this thing here. Now, I'm going to have to watch that those uprights don't catch on the front of the lens because it's going to be passing very close to the lens. I haven't done this yet, so I mean, this, this is going to be uh, first time with the fisheye lens as far as I know. Okay, wasn't that fun? Okay, we're back. Okay, I realize we are going from one extreme to the other here. In other words, from the fisheye 
to the macro. It's about as extreme as we can get here. Unless I was to slip on the super macro, but that would be kind of overkill here. Okay, here is our number six. I've already uh, nipped off the tabs on this side of the rail and I've bent them back out of the way. So we've only got the two here. Okay, now I'm going to do the other one exactly the same way. That's uh, on the other D sheet. Now where's my little tin? Okay, wet my whistle, and maybe my whistle can keep going here. Uh, now, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, 30 frames per second uh, versus 60 frames per second. Now, way back probably about five years ago, uh, one of the viewers says to me, why don't you start shooting at 60 frames a second? Now, this is when I was shooting at 1080p. Uh, I had a, a Nikon 810 at that time, and I guess he knew that the 810 was capable of shooting at 60 frames a second at 1080p. So, the reason I didn't do it is because of the, the video files are literally double the size. And it takes twice as long to upload a video to YouTube. Uh, 60 frames a second versus 30 frames a second. There's just twice as much data that you have to upload. Any, anyway, uh, uh, I, I'm, right now I'm shooting at, at 4K. I have a, a, a D850. And uh, I want to upgrade to the Z9, which will allow me to shoot 4K 60. Now, you're, some of you are thinking, ah, oh, I'm, my, I'm getting, uh, my brain is going numb here. You're giving me more data than I need. Well, if you're a camera buff, it's, it'll be kind of interesting. So, yeah, the, the Z9 or Z9 has just come out, or is, is just coming out. And I think about three, four weeks ago, I, I mentioned that uh, Andrew at Photo Central had uh, uh, sent me an email saying that... Uh, your, my name is at the top of the list if I want one. So, uh, uh, at, at that time, I wasn't too sure because I knew that I was going to need an adapter. Now, some of you may wonder, well, what is this adapter? Why would, it's, ni it's Nikon lenses, Nikon camera, why isn't it going to fit? Well, all of my lenses, like these, are what are known as F-mount lenses. And they... Uh, they're sort of an, an older style, whereas uh, Nikon is now switching over to the Z mount. Now these are there's a lot of electronics in these lenses. Not 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 this one so much, but but this one there's a lot of electronics in it. There's the the aperture is adjusted electronically, the uh, uh, the uh, autofocus is is adjusted electronically. Uh, and, and then uh, there's a bunch of other stuff as well. You'll, you'll see some buttons on the side here. Uh, anyway, I'm, once again, you're getting more detail than you need, right? 
Uh, so what about this adapter? Well, Nikon has, has made an adapter so that you can use your F-mount lenses on the new Z-mount bodies. And for, for lack of a, of a better way to describe it here, there, there is no glass in the adapter. The, the, this, by the way, is, is uh, extension tubes. Uh, there, it's, not a, it's not an adapter, but, but there's, an elect, there's electronics in it, or, or at least there's connections for electronics. Now the the uh, let's see if I can get this uh, open here. Okay, the adapter actually looks a lot like this, at least the new one does. And and there there is no glass in it, so you're not losing any optical quality from your from your good old F mount lenses, which is good. And I have seven of them. I have, I have seven F mount lenses. Uh, and only four of them I use regularly, and, and all four are right here on the model table right now. Uh, so, so this adapter that you can get apparently works quite well. I've watched some reviews over the last three weeks, and the adapter works quite well with the new Z9. So I'm, I'm probably. Uh, I'm probably going to upgrade to the Z9 so I can shoot 60 frames a second in 4K. In fact, it will shoot 120 frames a second in 4K. Plus, it will shoot 8K at 30 frames a second. And then you can dumb down your 8 frame in, in post and, and so that you have real high quality 4K 30. Uh, anyway, we're, we're getting into a bunch of data here that's not really important. Anyway, I think I'm going to send... Uh, uh, Andrew an email and ask him if he's heard anything about the rumor that's going around that Nikon is going to ship the Z9 two different ways with and without the adapter. Um, not that it makes that much difference. I mean you can just pay the full price on the adapter but if, it, if you can get it with the adapter and get a little bit of a deal going on why, why not right? I mean it's already a lot of money. Now last night I uh, I, I did uh, uh, phone my son, and I said, well, to the effect of, uh, if, if I was to get it, you, would you think that your dad is losing it? Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, he said, well, it's kind of up to you. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I, I think right now there's a real good chance I'll, I'll be upgrading to the Z9, for those of you who are camera buffs. And in the meantime, uh, let's uh, get Andy's photo etch bender going here and, and bend our ladders into shape so that we can get out of step 75. I think it's 75. Don't get old. <laughs> okay. It is just a coincidence that I was talking about Andrew at Photo Central. And then we have Andrew who made this photo etch bender for us. Now, here's a, a, an, an example of, you can hopefully see, this one here has to be turned over so that we can bend everything towards the, what I call the detents. Now, I've been calling these little indentations detents, but I, it could be that there is an official word for it, if you know what the the actual official word is, by the people who make photo etch, like the the Pontos people and so on. It could be that there is a, an actual English word for it. Um, yeah, in the comments below, let me know. Uh, and then I'll try and learn how to uh, start saying it right. Anyway, we'll, we'll turn this one over very, very gently here. Okay, now, now you should be able to see that we have the the little the little bending detents <laughs> uh, on the top here. Okay, I guess it doesn't really matter which one we use. Just.
Okay. Now I don't want to have this too close in under the nose, otherwise it's going to rip out our little little connections there. All I have to do is just hold that stringer down. And I call it a stringer because if you build stairs, you have the treads and you have the stringer. Okay. Now maybe we should be maybe we should be bending the outside one first. So we'll just clamp down on our treads. Mm, something like that. It's hard to get it exactly right. Okay, now we'll take our razor blade, which isn't really a razor blade. This is actually a blade out of a, a mini hand plane. I used to use it years and years ago for planing down like a balsa wood or something like that when I was making model airplanes. See, that's, that's loose. Maybe I should get a little bit more this way and then it's more centered to the way the nose is clamping down. You know, I, I could have maybe gone in a little further there, but if I'm careful and don't shove the blade in too, too far, I don't think I'll, I need to worry about trying to get it underneath the rail without bending it. And it's not working. It's just hang on a second. Where's my hobby knife? Sort of lift it up just a little bit here. Instead of getting underneath it, I'm, I'm pushing it. There we go. Okay. I think we've sort of got a start on it here now. There we go. Now very gently just sort of work this along like that. Now I don't want to I don't want to jam this in too far because if I do, then I'm going to be getting underneath the treads and bending them. And all I want to do is just bend it over at the stringer, like this. And and I don't think we need to go up at 90 degrees. We can do that later. Okay. Now we back back off the breaker bar. Maybe now is a good time to, to mention, because you've probably been hearing it, you'll hear a little clicking sound after I say certain words. And I don't know what that is. I've been trying to figure it out. It's something in, in the back of my throat. Um, and uh, I, I know it's kind of kind of annoying, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's sort of, a, sort of a little clicking sound, often at the end of a sentence. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to just do the other one the same way. And, uh, then we'll bend the treads later. Uh, there, I heard that little click. I, I could hear it in my, in my head right now. You probably heard it too. And there's it just something, maybe something to do with the sinuses. Anyway, I talk about everything, don't I? Okay. Here is a really good chance to be able to compare. If you remember about... Uh, uh, oh, maybe going on a year ago, I mentioned that one of the viewers had made a comment and, and said that if you start bending your treads with the top tread and then work your way down like this, there's less of a chance catching one of the treads with the end of your tweezer and accidentally bending it than if you start at the bottom and work your way up. I was always starting at the bottom and working my way up. So now, now we're going to do it both ways. 
being as my tweezers are already down here, I'm just going to go and I'm going to just catch on it and I'm going to just bend it a little bit, okay? It just has to have the illusion of being bent. It doesn't have to be a perfect uh, 45 degrees, it just has to not be. Now, maybe I should bend this one just a little bit more. trying not to get my fingers uh, in your line of vision here. Okay, they're, they're pretty much right. Okay, now this one, we'll do the other way. We'll start at the top and, and work our way down. Hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Maybe I didn't get that one quite right. Oh, I was going to work on our sunrise today, wasn't I? It was kind of nice. Well, if today's video is late, you'll know that's what happened. All right, we got them more or less. Okay, now we can, we can close this up just a little bit. I'm not sure where these uh, uh, ladders are supposed to go, but... Uh, I, I found that sometimes it's it's best to just leave them uh, sort of spread out a little bit, the, the, the uh, railings, and that way it kind of wedges in the uh, stairwell and it uh, doesn't fall through on you. So we'll just leave we'll just leave them the way they are and we can always squeeze them together later after they, they're painted and so on. Okay, let's, let's go work on our sunrise. And uh, I think I'm going to have to cut today's video off. Uh, YouTube is slowing down. I know yesterday was uh, Thanksgiving in much of North America ye uh, yesterday, and YouTube was really slow. In fact, some of you may have noticed the uh, episode was about 10, 15 minutes late getting started. So, uh, thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow. Now if you watch the upper right hand side of your screen you're going to see the time. You'll know what is happening when. Now I'm not doing the time lapse thing, I'm just taking little segments out uh, over a period of about an hour. Enjoy and thank you for watching.